Hello everyone. In the previous class we have studied the importance of brain. And it has to be protected well. Since it coordinates all our body activities, it has to be protected well. Human brain is well designed to resist the impacts. As we all know, brain is protected inside a bony cranium or skull. It's made up of 22 bones, 8 cranial bones and 14 facial skeletal bones. The only one movable joint is the lower jaw bone. With the help of this, we are able to open our mouth. All the other bones are connected to each other and fixed firmly onto the skull. The skull forms the head in all vertebrates. So that's about the skull. I'll draw a diagram on the board to show the protective layers of the brain. Suppose this is the bony cranium or the skull. This layer is called skull. Above the skull, there is another layer of subcutaneous tissue layer or otherwise it is called skin. And above the skin, and if you are fortunate enough, you will have some beautiful hairs on it. So the hair as well as skin give some protection to the skull. The next layer between the skull and the cerebral cortex, this is the cerebral cortex. Cerebral cortex means the outer part of the cerebrum. This is called cerebral cortex. Between the skull and the cerebral cortex, there is another layer called meninges. It's called meninges. The meninges is actually a three-layered membrane. Here comes the first layer. Then above the cerebral cortex, there is the third layer. And in between the first and the third layer, there is a middle layer here. So it's actually a three-layered membrane or otherwise it's called meninges pad. It's otherwise called meninges pad. Pad means the first layer is called pia matter. The second layer is called arachnoid matter. And the third layer is called dura matter. So since pia matter, arachnoid matter and dura matter, it's called meninges pad. The meninges give protection to the cerebrum. And infection to the meninges lead to a serious condition called meningitis. In between the layers of the meninges, especially in the middle layer, here in the middle layer, a fluid is present. This fluid is called cerebrospinal fluid or otherwise it is called CSF. It covers the whole cerebrum as well as the spinal cord. That is why it is called cerebrospinal fluid. A fluid always acts as a shock absorber. Here also the cerebrospinal fluid acts as a shock absorbing agent or it gives a cushioning effect to the brain. It extends from the cerebrum to the spinal cord since the whole structure enter into the vertebral column. And the mean CSF of a person is 150 ml. And if there is no enough fluid to float in, 
the brain will sit onto the skull and due to the weight of the brain it crushes the blood vessels below the brain which result in low blood, uh, blood pressure so the cerebrospinal fluid act as a shock absorber it protect the brain it regulate pressure and the fourth point it is formed the cerebrospinal fluid is formed from blood and it is reabsorbed into blood that means it provide oxygen and nutrients to the brain tissues so these are the functions of the cerebrospinal fluid so these are the main protection of the uh, brain the bony cranium or skull three layered meninges and cerebrospinal fluid four examples are uh, shown here the first one touching a hot burning candle the second one flashing light onto the into the eye the third one a person sneezing and the fourth one hitting the knee with a hammer what common thing is present in all these examples there is a stimulus we can see a stimulus in all these examples in the first case heat is the stimulus due to excess heat we feel hot and in the second example light is the stimulus intense light is the stimulus and in the third one before sneezing that person might have sniffed something from the environment either dust or pollen grains or whatever it is and in the last one hitting the knee with a hammer so as a result a pressure is created there so pressure is the stimulus there what else is common in all these examples we can see for this each stimulus there is a response for each stimulus a response is here what, what do you mean by a stimulus here a stimulus is something that changes the environment some changes that happened in the environment and here in the first example the response is withdrawal of the hand in the second constriction of the pupil and in the third case sneezing and in the fourth case removal of the neck so in all these cases for each stimulus there is a response and these responses are sudden actions or in other words we can say they are sudden and involuntary actions we are not aware about the actions first only after the action we are aware about the thing oh uh, my hand get burnt like that so these are not conscious actions this type of actions involuntary actions or sudden actions that take place in case of emergency are called reflex actions so reflex actions are sudden involuntary actions that take place in case of emergency we'll have a look upon to the spinal cord spinal cord is the extension of medulla oblongata it is very well protected inside the vertebral column it's covered with meninges which is filled with cerebrospinal fluid the cerebrospinal fluid provide oxygen and nutrients to the spinal tissues in small babies the spinal cord extend up to the tip of the vertebral column but in adults it reaches only till the half of the vertebral column so the spinal cord does not grow when the body grows there are 31 pairs of uh, spinal nerves that arise from the spinal cord i will draw the section of spinal cord here this is the central canal which is filled with cerebrospinal fluid and gray matter the one difference between the brain parts and spinal cord is that in brain parts gray matter is seen outside and white matter inside but in spinal cord white matter is seen outside and gray matter inside
we can see certain neurons or nerves extending out from the spinal cord so this is white matter and here these are the nerves that carry impulses to the spinal cord so this is called dorsal root this is the dorsal root and this is the ventral root which carry impulses away from the spinal cord so these are the main parts of spinal cord from the four examples we have seen here the first one is the most common one touching a hot object you might have experienced uh while ironing the clothes touching the hot iron box so while touching the finger on a hot object the cells there get stimulated as a result impulses are formed impulses are messages carried by a neuron and here the impulses are in the form of electric impulse it it cause it uh, it happens because of the change in the charge of ions these electric impulses are carried by one neuron through the dorsal root into the spinal cord and this neuron at once transfer the message to the second neuron which is seen inside the spinal cord and the second neuron it will send the message to the brain and it will not wait for the brain to respond after sending the message to the brain it sent the impulse through the ventral root into the effector muscle effector here the effector muscle is the hand so three neurons are responsible for this action so when we touch a hot object we will suddenly we will withdraw our hand involuntarily so one neuron carry the impulse through the dorsal root to the spinal cord it transfer the impulse to the second neuron seen here it send the message to the brain it will not wait for the brain to reply at once it will send the message to the next neuron which passes through the ventral root it and it reach the effector muscle and the hand is withdrawn the first neuron it is called sensory neuron it is called sensory neuron that carry impulses to the spinal cord and the second neuron it is called relay neuron you know in uh, sports we pass baton from one person to the another in relay so here it acts as a relay neuron or otherwise it's called interneuron since it's seen between the two neurons it is also called interneuron relay neuron or interneuron and the third neuron which carry impulses from the spinal cord to the body part or to the effector organ it's called motor neuron the third one is called motor neuron so the first one sensory neuron second one relay neuron or interneuron and the third one is called motor neuron and hence the action take place here so this action is called reflex action and the pathway of the reflex action it is called reflex arc why here the neuron the second uh, neuron is not waiting for brain's message because it will take some time for the message and it may cause harm to our body hope you understood the reflex actions and the reflex arc when you consume alcohol alcoholism can slow down the reflexes because alcoholism accelerate the production of gamma amino butyric acid or in other words it's called gaba in our body it's a neurotransmitter in the brain if the amount increases 
if the amount of GABA increases, it slows down the reflexes. So, it's not recommendable to drink alcohol and uh, after consuming alcohol, it's not recommendable to drive the vehicles. Hope you understood the point. So, now it's time to recollect what we have studied here in this class. In this topic, we have studied the structure of spinal cord, reflex action and reflex arc. Thank you.